Our theme for the first year of the Seeking the Human Spirit initiative was sacrifice. Little did we know how aptly that would apply, not only to Houston Grand Opera, but to the entire Houston community. Hurricane Harvey curtailed some of our initial plans for the initiative, but this experience has proved to us over and over that art, and especially opera, uplift and bring alive the human spirit. We still are planning to have our opera season absolutely open in October. That's our aim and that's our hope. But it's been a really overwhelming response from our donors and our HGO family. And our HGO family is the staff, but it's also everybody who supports us, everybody who buys a ticket for us. That is our HGO family. And we're here, you know, we're, we're members of Houston. We're, we're, we are standing here with everybody else in Houston, just trying to do the very best we can to help each other. I think what great art does best is refill your soul. And I think uh, there's going to be a great, great need for that in this city. Fortunately, we were still able to work with our Seeking the Human Spirit community partners. And through HGOCO, we were able to make powerful connections with many people who were not traditional opera goers. This was the first mini residency that we've had at Houston Methodist. And so it really set a wonderful precedent that we're hoping to continue. So I attended a program at the Jung Center held by a, a Jungian therapist. We also had a very lively discussion about sacrifice. We, we talked about the meaning of sacrifice according to Webster. Sacrifice in the name of a higher ideal. When I went to the opera, what was the surprise was, was how I changed my perspective on who was sacrificing. The labyrinth is an ancient archetype. It's all about a, a meditational walk. And so this project in combination with Seeking the Human Spirit, uh, the HGO initiative, gives these children or these young people an opportunity to not only see the power of music, but also how creativity connects with spiritual consciousness. And we're so grateful to have seen and felt that the art that we had to present really mattered, even presenting it in a most unconventional circumstance like the George R. Brown. It was really important to me to go to opera after Harvey, for sure, uh, because I just need, I need to be reminded of all that goodness, and all that beauty, and all that hope. I can't imagine anybody expected it, but I can, I can certainly see how seeking the human spirit and resilience were inextricably intertwined in, in ways that, again, I don't think were expected, I don't think were necessarily hoped for, um, but they were certainly there. Of course, everyone connected to Houston Grand Opera, from our staff to our crew, our guest artists and our creative teams, to our audience members, had to make adjustments that we had never expected at the beginning of the year. So I think the first step in sort of helping the directors understand what would be happening to their production was taking them into the venue. And again, in the early stages, this is before we had set it up as a theater at all. So for the first two shows, just walking them into this vast empty space and saying, this is the space, and then walking through how we were going to create their their work in that space. I think that before we talk about the singers, we need to realize how impossible it was for us to find rehearsal space. We had to move instruments, singers were moving around all the time. That was a, a real challenge and I think the company office handled that absolutely impeccably. 
I mean, honestly, the, uh, we can talk a lot about the nuts and bolts of what it took to get here, but I think we, it would not have been possible without first a vision of how we were going to make things work in our theater, um, but also a vision of how we would set up our warehouse to be a full, you know, fully functioning costume shop. But everybody's um, acceptance of where we needed to get to and ability to just do what was necessary to get there. If we didn't have that, this wouldn't have been possible. We did a great job of um, dealing with sound noise. We rehearsed West Side Story in the GRB in two separate spaces with sound bleed. Very difficult to concentrate, let alone let's just talk about all the conferences, the volleyball, the cheerleading, all of that, all the extraneous noise that makes it difficult to concentrate. And you know, they just did it. They did it. And when we turned to our community for help, the response was extraordinary, especially from our board of directors. We are so grateful to the individuals, corporations and foundations who rallied to our help as we seek to recover and move forward from Hurricane Harvey. The, the overwhelming moment to me was walking into the theater, which I had not seen before, uh, on the opening night of La Traviata. That just the Resilience Theater just captured everything. This just, it wasn't there before, and now it was there in all respects. The lighting, the sound, all the problems that had to be solved, uh, all the people that had to pitch in, all the disappointments that had been there, I'm sure, but somehow people got beyond those, all the teamwork, every, everything was captured in that one moment. I, I, I feel like opera offers this real time live drama of what it is to be human because in any performance we see all of the strengths and the weaknesses of human skill of human ingenuity of human capacity uh, and I, th I think honestly at the end of the day the resilience theater is an opera our Seeking the Human Spirit theme next season, when we return to our beloved Wortham Theatre Center, is transformation. And we truly are going to be a company and a city transformed. We are so grateful to you for the opportunity to connect this city through our art and with our wonderful partnerships. And we so look forward to being back in our creative home with renewed energy and spirit. See you next season.